Hi guys, this is Alice. And I'm Sean from Straight Code. Today we have something really great for you guys. We're going to talk about algorithmic trading. To get started, we're going to go into the history of algorithmic trading up to today. Then, we're going to talk about all the different types of algorithmic trading that are done. Finally, we'll wrap it all up with a Python tutorial that will show you guys how you can start algorithmic trading as soon as the video is over. All right, so to get started, Alice, do you want to talk to our audience a little bit about what an automated trading system is? Sure. According to Wikipedia, an automated trading system, also called algorithmic trading, is a computer program that creates order and automatically submits them to a market center to exchange. So what that means is that the program will make order based on some predefined rules. It can exit a position, enter order based on the circumstances. The system can also be used to invest different amount of money each trading card. So that seems pretty interesting on an academic level, Alice, but why is it that people do algo trade practice? For the same reason that people use automatic system for anything. Well, first, it is way faster. We're talking about orders of magnitude faster. And it doesn't get tired like any software. It does not make mistakes. Especially when we are talking about money, a lot of people can get emotionally invested and affect their decision making. Because for so many people, whenever money gets involved, they get incredibly emotional and they make terrible choices. So that explains a little bit about some of the positives. But what are some of the negatives to algorithmic trading? Well, like any other automation systems, it requires quite a bit of monitoring. So, for example, you might have an internet disconnection. In that case, there could be a lot of problems goes wrong with your system. There are a lot of potential issues that could occur which require constant monitoring and maintenance of the software as well. I think what you said, Alice, makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, it's basically that you're just going to need to hire more software engineers if you're building an automated trading system that's going to scale. So now, could you talk to us a little bit more about the history of automated trading systems? I know for me, this was particularly interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, algo trading started way before the internet of modern computing system was invented. In 1949, Richard Dawkins introduced the idea of buy and sell the funds with previous created sets of rules. He was the pioneer of the field of managing futures. Dawkins was the first person to introduce the concept of neutral fund and money management. Most importantly, he was the person who developed the systematic approach to future, future money management. By the mid-1990s, some models were available for sale for the public. As technology improves, there are more and more financial managers and brokers starting to work on use algorithmic trading to help them to manage clients' portfolio. Another important moment for algo trade happens in 2008. John Stang created the company Betterment. The company is an automated goal based investing services, also known as Robo Advisor. This is a financial advisor that provides digital financial advice with very minimal human intervention. Since then, this kind of system has been improving very quickly thanks to the development in the computer IT industry. Today's automated trading system is managing a large amount of assets all over the world. In 2014, more than 75% of the stock share traded in the United States exchange are originated from the automatic trading system orders. That's so interesting. So now could you talk to us a little bit about the different types of strategies that are used for algorithmic trading? the most common strategy act is actually trend following. So trend following is kind of like what the name suggested. It is a way for people to follow certain trends, creates profit within that trend. There are many different techniques in trend following, but basically trend followers are not predicting any specific price level. However, they're just trying to identify a trend. And when they believe a trend is established, they will jump on the trend and try to get profit throughout this period. Different people have different ways to define what is a trend. How they can tell when a trend is established is based on certain different indicators. So these indicators helps investors to identify isolate the trends. One of the very common indicator is moving averages. People also use relative strength index or balanced values and such. According to Investitopia, moving averages can act as a sport. So moving averages is the average price of a particular stock over a specific period of time. So in this chart over here, when I say it acts as a support, that means the stock price generally uh, don't dip below the moving averages. In this case, as a trader, what you can do is you can see if the price has started to go closer to your moving average. And when it does, you can expect the price to go up. In different circumstances, people may use moving averages for different purposes. For example, um, this graph here, the blue line and the red lines are moving averages plotted over 50 days and 200 days. When the two lines cross each other, it could be an indicator for sell or for buy. There are clearly other strategies. However, you can probably see a similarities between these strategies here. While looking at strategies that has a clear criteria for entering and exit prior to entering the trade. So you can set these criteria for your systems to follow and it will execute the trade. So that was some of the basic strategies people use. There are obviously a lot of different strategies out there. One that I have been particularly interested in is high frequency trading. According to Wikipedia, in financial market, high frequency trading is a type of algorithmic trading characteristic by high speed, high turnover rates, high order to trade ratio that leverages high frequency financial data and electronic trading tools. 
So what that means is that you will have a system that process a large amount of information, such as monitoring multiple markets at once in a very short period of time. And you will use that information to determine whether you're moving in or out of a position again in a very short period of time. That is done with a combination of very powerful computer and very sophisticated algorithms. In high frequency trading, it's all about the speed and the quantity. So often each trade could only earn the trader less than a few cents. But since this kind of trade is done in a high volumes, it could still be very profitable for the traders. The portfolio is usually short term. Usually the trader with the fastest executions will take home the most amount of profit. One of the strategies in high frequency trading is taking advantage of statistical arbitrage or latency arbitrage. So pretty much any arbitrages that occurs before the market reaches equilibrium. The concept of high frequency trading actually started back in the 1930s, when some traders started using fast telegraph services to communicate and physically make the exchange in a physical location. So as electronic trading develops, high frequency trading execution time continuously to be decreasing. Today, we are looking at some of the execution time as short as a millisecond or microsecond. So high frequency trading seems really, really cool, but in all practicality, it's actually not too useful for the average trade. You would in fact need an extremely high speed internet connection with a direct link to either New York Stock Exchange or whatever central market that you would be trading your underlyings with. Exactly. So another very interesting thing, neural networks starting to be used to make market predictions lately. Cool. So stock market prediction are ways to predict future direction of a certain stock. It can be based on many different things. One of them, for example, is the value of the company. To determine the value of company, you can use the performance of the company, the people who are working for the company, the ideology of the company, or many other factors. Another way is to use past price trend to predict the future direction of a certain stock. Obviously, a newer, more interesting one, I think, is using scientific reports, financial reports, and many other data sources. So once those information are collected, it will be fed to a neural network. And the neural network will use those information to predict future market price. So as you can see, there's a lot into neural network. We probably can't explain everything in this video right now. However, in short, neural network is getting better and better at making decisions for either buying, selling, and even predicting market directional changes. Yeah, absolutely. Neural networks are definitely the state of the art of machine learning right now. And although we can't go into it in this video, maybe in a different video we can cover that topic. Yeah, definitely. What can we do with all these information? So there is a lot of stuff that people can do to get started with algorithmic trading right Right now. And that's what we're going to jump into here with Python. Hey, what's going on, guys? Sean from Straight Fit. We're going to dive into talking about algo trading with Python. So the Python script that we're going to be making use of requires the Alpaca Trading API. If you don't already have an Alpaca Trading account, make sure and open one now. The link is in the description. Okay, so after you have your Alpaca Trading account, the next thing that we're going to need to do is install the API to use with Python. To do that, make sure and enter a command right here. Okay, so before we go into the details of the script, let's talk a little bit about what this script will and won't do. First of all, this script will not make you a million dollars overnight. It also won't allow you to quit your job anytime soon. But what it might do is show you a simple framework that you can use and expand on so that one day, maybe, you can make a solid profit from it too. And just in case it needs to be said, I am not by any means a financial advisor. So then, how exactly does this script that we're about to make work? Well, it's actually a pretty simple premise. It scans through a list of S&P 500 stocks, and then it finds those that are most oversold. So our Python algorithm here ranks all the S&P 500 stocks according to those with the sharpest decrease in the exponential moving average, or the EMA, for the last 50 days. What that means is that stocks that have had the sharpest decrease in exponential moving average for the last 50 days, or those that are most oversold, are most likely to be purchased. Now this is a technique that was used long ago in the past, and it was profitable at one time. But at this point, I think that all of the profits that we made out of it have already been taken. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna look at here is how to actually get the API, get connected to the API. You can see that here in lines 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, we connect up to the API. Make sure and put your own key ID as well as your secret key, which you should have if you already created the account, right? Then make sure and just leave the base URL as it already is. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about after you've connected up your API with your credentials is the universe. The universe can be referenced a whole lot in the main application, and it is going to be attached below as a link, so you can download both the, the trading script and the universe itself. The universe is simply just a list of all, of all the stocks in the S&P 500. This is the ticker data for all stocks in the S&P 500, so that our algo trader can reference through and find the stocks that we think are most oversold. Okay, so now we're gonna jump straight into it by discussing our main function here. The main function is where all of our most abstract operations are going on. If you take a look at it, you can see that we have a while true. So as soon as this function is called, we're going to launch into that loop. And then the next operation that occurs is us checking whether the stock market is going. We do this by making a call to the Alpaca API with the api.get clock call. 
If clock data is open, or if we're in the time frame where the stock market is open, we jump into all the operations inside the if statement. The first operation is we pull back a list of all the S&P 500 stocks from our universe script that we just discussed. After that, we go ahead and get a, a data frame of all the prices of every stock in that list. Then we capture any potential orders that we want to make based off of the algorithm that I described a few moments ago. And finally, we trade on all of those orders. Okay, so the first thing that we did in the main function was that we called the prices function. And right here, as you can see on the screen, the prices function is just a way to call the Alpaca API so that we can get a list of prices returned for every stock in our universe, or every stock in S&P 500. Now, we had to set a time frame that we wanted the prices to be captured over, and for our example, we chose 50 days. That can be seen in line 49, but you can modify this to your own design. So if you want to look at a longer time frame to find larger dips, or a shorter time frame to find smaller dips, you can do that. The next thing that we did in our main function was we called the get orders function, and we passed to it the API, which is just our connection to the Alpaca API, as well as our data frame. And what the get orders function is doing is really, it's the heart of our algo trading system, okay? So the get orders function will go through each symbol and all the prices through the data frame, and it will do the exponential moving average magic that we talked about previously. Then it will rank all those stocks by those that are most oversold. So in this case, it will return a list of potential orders that are the most oversold stocks for our 50 day time. Okay, so finally, the last section that the main function calls is the trade function. And this basically just takes all the information from everything else already done in the algorithmic system and it processes it. What that means is that it goes on and it makes all the orders that you want to make given the buy signals. Now, this isn't really an area that I would modify a whole lot of. However, if you want to step it back one step and go into the purchase functions, you can do a whole lot of modification in there to change the algorithm to whatever suits you and whatever you think can make sense. Okay, so like I had said earlier, this is really just the beginning. You might not really be able to make a whole lot of money with a system like this, but if you modify it and work on it over time, I think you'll find that there is definitely some money to be made, especially if you invest more and more time. If you like this content, make sure and give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to our channel, and leave any comments below if you're concerned about anything, if you have a question on anything, or if you're unsure how the software works exactly. Happy to answer. Thank you.